Ever since I started learning about Vim, I got really excited by the idea of numbered registers. Registers are amazing overall, because you can store anything that you want in them, and they're actually stored across sessions. If you store something in some register and reopen new of them, it will still be there. But the reason why I got excited about numbered registers specifically is that I imagined that every deletion you make, or change, or copy, would go in there, so you could basically say, oh, give me the fifth last thing that was in my default register. But that's not actually how they work. Something appears in your numbered registers only if they are a deletion that is at least a line big. So say I have some text and I yank this word. It does not appear in my numbered registers. So if I try to access the register one, I will not be accessing the word test something else is going to be there. And even if I yank an entire line or even multiple, that will not appear there either. Only if I delete or change does something get put into those numbered registers, making the whole idea of them pretty useless. Which is why I implemented a kill ring. You can think of it as a register that stores registers. It's a doubled stack, which you can access from both the nose and the tail, as I call them. And this thing has been incredibly useful. I have a few mappings for it that you could change to your own if you want to, that let me do all the actions on the kill ring. I have a remap to add what's in my current register to the tail of the kill ring. In other words, the start of it. A mapping that adds to the nose so to the end, then a mapping that takes from the tail or the start and takes just means put what's in there into my default register and also remove that text from the kill ring as well as popping from the nose, so from the last element and we also remove it. Then an NFT uh, mapping to just delete everything in the kill ring, which to be fair, I don't really use often and that is because of the next thing, kill ring compile, that also deletes everything in the kill ring, but compiles all the elements into a single string and puts it into your default register. So you can keep on deleting stuff and then adding it to your kill ring, then call kill ring compile, and now you just have a single string that contains all the deletions you've had so far then you can just decide to paste it where you want to have it. And you even have kill ring compile reversed. So you also compile to a string, but in reverse order. The singular characters will not be reversed, don't worry, only the elements. Now, this conceptually can be difficult to understand. I'm only saying this because I made all of this on stream and it took me about four hours. If you want to watch that, I will leave a link to the stream VOD in the description. But to explain why this is actually incredibly useful, let me give you a real example that I used just yesterday. My keybindings.json, the file that contains all the key bindings for VS Code, is very unorganized, so I decide to organize it to some point. Let's actually do a real task right now. I want to put all the uh, hotkeys for tab that I have in VS Code into a single section. To do that, let's first search for tab, and we have our first place that the tab exists. So let's mark it at A and go to the next one. We can immediately see that it's quite a bit after so what I want to do is grab all the other tabs and put them in the first place. So what I do now is just delete what I want to delete somehow and use the mapping to add that nose. This is the mapping for me, it may be different for you if you decide to change it. We also need this, so we also take that. Now we can go to the next tab and also take it, put it at the nose. We could also put it at the uh, tail and let's actually do it with the next tab by using the capital R instead. Now it's at the tail, not the nose. And this will be reflected when we eventually compile the string. All right, let's say I was working really fast and I fucked up. I accidentally took this and put it into my kill ring, even though I did not intend to. Well, this is actually very fixable. We take at the same place where we just put that thing into the kill ring. Since what I just deleted and put into my kill ring, I did at the nose, I also can take at the nose, 
and now I can continue using my kill ring without like redoing most stuff. And we can do the same thing if we accidentally put at the tail and then recognize that, oh, actually, no, I was wrong. We just pick at the tail and that's it. Then maybe you want to confirm that you actually deleted it. Well, you can take at some place again and paste. You can see that it has tab here, meaning that we indeed removed the element that we accidentally put into our kill ring. So we can just take it again and put it back. It's very, very simple. Now, this is a, a real example, or at least as close to it as it could be for making an actual video, because I don't actually want to move all tabs into a single place. It's a bit more complex than that, but this is an example. So let's actually press the hotkey to compile all of our kill ring into a single string and we can see at the bottom it says kill ring compiled and I haven't mentioned this but for most actions you will get a notification basically saying that this action completed successfully. If you were looking at the bottom left this whole time you might have noticed that. First of all after we compile our kill ring there is also nothing in our kill ring right now. If we try to take it says kill ring empty and does not override our default register, meaning that we can just press P right now, and as you can see, everything that we took, we just pasted. Since I don't actually want those changes, let me restore everything to what it was before and show you a different example as well. Something that I noticed needing to do often is switching parameters around, and the commas between them are always so annoying and this is exactly where a kill ring would be amazing. Let's do a bit more of a complex motion. First of all, I delete the first parameter and put it into my kill ring. It's now the first thing there and the only thing actually. Then I delete the comma and space but now I add it to the tail. So now in my kill ring, if we can visualize it, let's do it in a comment. What's in there right now is comma space and then the next element starts, whatever it was, I actually forgot. So now we can just go to the end of this parameter and compile, paste. Now that I remember, <laughs> I probably added offset to my kill ring like some time ago and completely forgot about it. And this is exactly where another mapping, leader Z, to kill your kill ring can be useful. Maybe you want to use the kill ring for some important task and you want to make sure that it doesn't contain any other thing that you might have added to it. And this situation would be perfect for that. You know that you want to switch parameters around and for that you need an empty kill ring. Or do you? Let's come back to the situation again and try to approach it a different way. By the way, I'm not saying that the previous way we did it is, is any way bad, matter of fact I prefer it, but this is another way to use the kill ring, a bit more manually. So first thing we do is we delete the first argument, and right now we are not even checking whether our kill ring is empty or not. Well, by the way, it is for sure now because we compiled, but we don't even have to, because we don't have to take everything from the kill ring. We can just take one element at a time. So let's add to the nose and then delete here and add to the nose again. We go to the end of the parameter and now we take at the nose, paste, and take at the nose again, paste again. Compiling is very useful when you're collecting data more and more, where doing things one by one would be very annoying. But you don't have to compile. You can just take things one by one if it's maybe like two elements, like there were here, and still keep everything else that was in your killing before intact. I remapped single quote to mean double quote, and all these mappings that I have here for kill ring reflect that. When I'm using the kill ring, it feels like I'm just accessing a register, when in reality, no, not really. I'm saying this to explain why I have these mappings. So for most people, they won't make sense, but maybe you like this idea as well. To get access to all this code that you're seeing right now, you can just follow the link in the description. As I often do, I will leave one link that points to the current commit and another that points to the most recent commit. The latter being different in such a way that the code might not even exist or maybe it's 
gotten better. You will also need my function called reverse table, which I will also le leave a link to. At the start of the video, I talked about numbered registers, but my kill ring doesn't use them. So numbered registers are still useless, which is why I just made them temporary registers. Essentially registers that get cleared out once you close new of them. And the idea is very, very simple. It's just a table with 10 elements. You make mappings to either get the value at that index in the table. So maybe uh, you get the text in the eight element into your default register and then mappings to set, basically take your default register and put that text into that index. It's a very simple idea that just grants you 10 more registers to play with. And all the other registers, the lettered registers, can now be more freely used because you don't have to use them to just hold something temporarily. And additionally, with the kill ring, you have to do that even less. And that opens up a wall of opportunities. That's a terrible way to say it, but I hope you understand what I mean. A pile of opportunities, let's say that. Now, because I don't constantly need to put something temporarily in my registers to then put all of them back together in some other way, and then I'm not sure which registers I can use again or not. With the numbered registers and the kill ring, my lettered registers are actually free, meaning that I am more likely to store something permanently there. For example, when I do commits in my V register, I have VS Code colon to make a commit that changes something for VS Code. I'm actually using some register to hold some text permanently. And same thing for macros. I can now more freely use macros because if I decide that some key contains some macro, I can pretty consistently rely on it. So these two amazing features have the hidden benefit of giving the other feature easier usability as well. So if you enjoyed this video, consider following me on Mastodon. I leave a link to that in the description. Press a like, type some comment, maybe have a question or suggestion. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss my content, but most importantly, stay fresh, cheese bags! And I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!